Welcome to our service of worship for St. Patrick's Day. Ordinarily around this date, the Christian Heritage of Dumbarton Project, part of Dumbarton Churches Together, would have arranged for primary five children from all primary schools in Dumbarton, plus representatives of Kilpatrick School, to come together to play a yes-no answer game relating to characters vaguely or very vaguely linked to St. Patrick. It's partly to help them to learn a bit about his links with this area, but mainly to bring them together from the two different streams of education as part of an anti-sectarian initiative. It usually happens on or near 17 March traditionally marked as the Feast of St. Patrick. He's patron saint of Ireland. But today we're going to focus on his links, or reputed links, with Dumbarton and Dunbartonshire. And think about this town and area. Our first hymn is number 465, Be Thou My Vision. We won't play the music during the service, but at the end there are YouTube links to the hymns that have been used, and if you click on them there will be music, singing and words to accompany your singing. It is believed that Patrick lived in the 5th century. There are a few definite historical sources about him, though there is a vast collection of later legend. The two main textual sources are his Confessio and his Letter to Caroticus. He's associated particularly with the church at Armagh in North East Ireland. According to the former text, he was British by background, speaking a language related to Welsh in the last years of Roman Britain or the years after the Romans had left. His father was a town official, a deacon in the church, and may have been of aristocratic rank, which would tie in with the Latin version of Patrick's name and he was born and brought up on the west coast somewhere. As a youth he was captured by Irish pirates and sold into slavery, looking after livestock. He escaped, came back to his home, but felt a calling to become a priest. He trained in Gaul, modern France, and then went back to Ireland as a missionary, starting to organise the church community there. The letter was written to a Christian king in Britain, condemning him for conducting a raid in Ireland, during which Irish converts were taken prisoner to be sold as slaves. Some tales about Patrick may have become confused with those about Palladius, a missionary sent a few years earlier by Pope Celestine to be bishop for the Irish Christians. And some tales about Patrick may have been amplified to enhance his role in the conversion of Ireland and the organisation of the church there. Many places from Cornwall to the Clyde claimed to be the birthplace of Patrick, and there's no way of knowing where he actually came from. However, it is clear that Dunbartonshire's claim goes back a long way. The parish to the east of Dunbarton, which at one time ran from Milton to Morgai, was known as Kilpatrick in the Middle Ages. The chapel in the medieval castle and the parish church in Dumbarton were both dedicated to Patrick. 
Old Kilpatrick was the westernmost fort on the Antonine Wall, though the Romans hadn't used it for a long time. And Dumbarton was the centre of a powerful pro-Roman kingdom known as Altclut. So it is possible that he came from here. And even if he didn't, for a very long time, the area has claimed him as its own. There is a poem which appears in hymn books that is known as St. Patrick's Breastplate. It's usually dated to the 8th century, attributed to Patrick, but whether he actually wrote it or it just reflects the tradition that he left behind, we don't know. But let's listen to it now. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity, by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three. I bind this day to me for ever by power of faith, Christ's incarnation, his baptism in the Jordan River, his death on cross for my salvation, his bursting from the spiced tomb, his riding up the heavenly way, his coming at the day of doom, I bind unto myself today. I bind unto myself today the virtues of the starlit heaven, the glorious sun's life-giving ray, the whiteness of the moon at even, the flashing of the lightning free, the whirling wind's tempestuous shocks, the stable earth, the deep salt sea, around the old eternal rocks. I bind unto myself today the power of God to hold and lead, his eye to watch, his might to stay, his ear to hearken to my need, the wisdom of my God to teach, his hand to guide, his shield to ward, the word of God to give me speech, his heavenly host to be my guard. I bind unto myself the name, the strong name, of the Trinity. By invocation of the same, the three in one, and one in three. Of whom all nature hath creation, eternal Father, Spirit, Word. Praise to the Lord of my salvation. Salvation is of Christ the Lord. Amen. Our Bible reading comes from Matthew's Gospel. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 33. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A woman takes some yeast and mixes it with 40 litres of flour until the whole batch of dough rises. Amen. Wherever we live, whether it's Dumbarton, a town or village nearby, or somewhere else entirely, the chances are that we live in a community. That community will have changed over the years for a whole lot of reasons, including greater car ownership, the way we shop, the type of work available and different patterns of working, the type of homes we have and how we spend our leisure time. Over the past year, many communities have experienced many other changes. People furloughed, working from home or out of work. Shops, pubs and restaurants closed, 
some never to reopen. Children not at school, then homeschooled. People struggling financially, with many more than before turning to food banks for help. Older people shielding, families not able to visit loved ones in care homes, restrictions on the numbers attending weddings and funeral, and so on. Against that, we've seen an upsurge, though not universally, in talking to neighbours, looking out for neighbours, and helping out neighbours, even talking to strangers in the street. Here in Dumbarton, as in many communities, there is widespread development going on. The Borough Hall has been refurbished as the council offices. New housing is being built on the old Hiram Walker and Blackburn sites. And there are many other new housing plans. A new walkway along the Leven is being started. And there are various other regeneration plans in the offing. Despite all of this, there are still many issues to be addressed in our town. Poverty and all that goes with it, including mental and physical health, education, addiction issues, being able to manage finances and run a home, employment, adequate social housing. Creating secure, well-paid jobs and career opportunities in the area. Moving to a carbon neutral future. The same will probably be true for many communities and not just in the west of Scotland. Most initiatives for regeneration, levelling up, resetting communities rely on the financial and legal resources of central Scottish or local government. There is, however, still a role for individuals and church communities to bring about change and develop a sense of wholeness and health in our communities. Small local projects can make a big difference. As Jesus said, we can be like the yeast that goes into the dough and makes the whole loaf rise. Amen. Let's be quiet in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we give thanks for being part of a community, for friends, family, neighbours and colleagues, and pray that people may feel committed to working for the best for their communities, offering time and energy to help others. We pray for those who are facing problems of loneliness, illness, poverty, unemployment, underemployment, abuse. We pray for all who work in health and social care, with all the extra stress they have been under this year. We pray for all who are involved in local or national government. We give thanks for the beauty around us and pray that we may appreciate and care for it. We pray for the churches in Scotland, that they may be faithful witnesses to Christ's love and good news, and that more and more people will respond to Christ's call. We sum up all our prayers in the prayer that Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Our closing hymn 
is number 577. The setting of a part of that prayer or breastplate of St. Patrick. Christ be beside me. May the Father shield you in the valleys. May Christ aid you on the mountains. May the Holy Spirit bathe you on the slopes. And may God Almighty take you in the clasp of his own dear hand. Amen.